Welcome to the Barrel Chat Podcast, where we provide an unfiltered look into the craft beer industry from the untrained palates of two dumbass outsiders. I am Matthew Muncie, and as always, I am joined by Dustin Wood. Dustin, how are we doing this evening? Good. I'm super excited to be talking about what news is happening and kind of jump into what I've been drinking. Had some pretty awesome beers. I am imbibing on a pretty god darn good beer right now. So super excited about uh, to being able to talk about that. Uh, so how have you been, dude? Anything fun going on in your life? Uh, not really. Just trying to survive this heat wave that's coming through. Uh, right. Heat, heat waves <laughs> and being fat do not mix very well. But... Uh, you know, that's all right. I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try on Saturday and get out to King King Jug Brewing. Oh, yeah. They d- opened last weekend, right? Uh, they opened today. So this is okay. this is so being recorded opening. Thursday yeah, night. Yeah, 6-1. Yeah, um, yeah I, got a, I got a bunch of alone time on Saturday because the, the wife and kid are going to a pool. So I was like, you know what? Let's go. It's in Fishers. It's not far. They're open at like 4. I think it was like 4 to 10. It's like, eh. Let's go give it a shot. See what they're I told all about. Them, I told them we were going to reach out um, and come visit. So uh, if you jump into the IG and ta- and reach out to them, I'm sure they'll be like, yeah, come on by. It's going to be busy as crap. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, figured it's worth it. And I assume they're over there by uh four day Ray over in that area. So go. Maybe I think hit they're them over by themselves. I don't know where they are, but I think they're over kind of in, in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I just saw Lantern Road, and I know that's kind of where Four Day Ray is. So, took a oh, took a guess. Maybe it is. It, I'm, guess. You might be right. I think it might be north of them, though. All right. Well, before we jump into the show, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. You can just look up Barrel Chat or Barrel Chat Podcast. You can also now listen to the show on YouTube, Barrel Chat Podcast, on there as well. And if you do enjoy this show, uh, we ask that you leave us a rating on whatever platform you're doing so on. So whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, uh, just uh, like, subscribe, rate, you know, let's let's go down that path now. And uh, you can also join our Discord server, which is basically a chat room. Just we're slowly getting new people each day, and we're actually looking looking towards ways of maybe doing some live old school shows because we can do them at home. So when we drink 45 Imperial Stouts, it's not a, it's not a problem. And yeah, we so, can bring other people on and drink with us too. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, we could, we could do all kinds of fun stuff in Discord. And uh, so all you got to do is contact us, either DM us or, or email us, uh, which is barrelchatpodcast at gmail.com, or just look out. I'm always posting it on Instagram and Facebook uh, in the stories and stuff, the link to join. So go ahead and do that and join us for the fun. If you don't know what Discord is, just hit one of us. Well, hit me up. I'm the one who knows how to do it, and uh, and I'll get you all set up. So the Friday 4-Pack, if you are new to this show, consists of four different topics. First of all, what we've been drinking and tonight what we're currently drinking. Two news stories and what's happening around the Indiana beer world over the next couple months. So we'll jump in here to what we've been drinking. Let's start with what we are drinking. What what do you got on tap in front of you right now? So I'm rocking right now Wolfridge Brewing Company's Clear Sky Double Shot Cinnamon Toast Brunch. And I'm telling you what. It is probably one of the best, like, flavored imperial or well, flavored uh, uh, cream ales that I've ever had for sure. But with it being an imperial, it's 9% ABV cream ale with a ton of amazing adjunct like flavoring in it. Uh, quick notes here it says, a uh, few of our beers carry the type of cult following that Cinnamon Toast Brunch has had over the few years that we've been brewing it. Built upon the base of our award-winning Daybreak recipe, we then add the finest whole cinnamon to this beer to create a -a one-of-a-kind, out-of-this-world drinking experience. The Craft Double Shot variant, we raise the alcohol, we double down on the whole cinnamon, vanilla beans, and as well as the finest coffee. Basically, it's just a monster-ass version of regular uh, Cinnamon Toast Brunch, 
and it is you could taste the alcohol so you can taste the abv i like that quite a bit but you get all the cinnamon you do get the coffee it's got a huge nose man i just feel like it's daybreak on steroids i just about pulled that beer out of my fridge i looked at it and i was like ah i don't know if i want that much beer for this but i probably should have went with that now knowing that you had it because we could have talked about it but dude it's it's good like it's got the coffee that you were missing in the episode so Mm -hmm. yeah which comes out next wednesday by the way daybreak their uh coffee vanilla cream ale from wolf ridge brewing so be on lookout for that but yeah it's uh i mean i tell you their graphic designer is bar done one of my favorites in the beer world so just the simplicity of this label, but also how beautiful it is. It's got the Cincinnati skyline in the background with like a nice like dirty ombre of colors. It looks like uh, somebody watercolored and then like went and rubbed dirt all over it. So it's just got this weird effect, but it's got the oh, state of Ohio on it. It's got their wolf. It's got one line logo on it. It's got Wolf's Ridge logo, which... I think is one of the cleanest brewery logos out there right now. It's just, it's easy to read. It's recognizable. I like it. So overall, this is super exciting. If you get to that area, go check it out for sure. Nice. And then what have you been drinking this week? Um, so I made down some notes here. Uh, last night I went to uh, North Mass Boulder and did some bouldering with my buddy Paul. We then went and got some drinks up at the uh, draft setup there. They have like 14 tap handles. But I had Gugman House's uh, Hop Traveler, which is their new double IPA. It's featuring HBC 586, which my dumbass should have done some research on. But it's something special because it's an experimental thing. It's also based with a Citra Cryo hop, so it's like a special editions of the Citra, so it's not just the cone hop. It's something like more powerful, I think. But they said it's an experimental with the new hop varietals for them. Holy God, it was good. Like, super thick body, a beautiful, like, uh, yellowy, like, thick, vis- like, hazy appearance. Just the perfect-looking hazy But it had some monster fruit notes, some citrus notes. But the thing that really jumped out to me was the amount of pineapple in that beer. Like it just, it literally felt like taking a bite out of a juicy pineapple. And then it's just nice and smooth all in all. It was, to be fair, it might be one of my favorite hazies that they make. I love most of their hazies, but this one was just a different profile, different flavor. Uh, So huge fan of it. So that was Hop Traveler. Uh, check it out. I don't know where else you'll find it other than at Googman or at the climbing gym, but I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Um, other than that, I have uh, been, I was in tennis, well, just north of Tennessee recently, and my, uh, we'll call him my cousin, uh, weird connections, my wife's cousin, so I don't know what the hell that makes him to me, like my f- f- second cousin twice removed or some nonsense like that. <laughs> <laughs> But he brought some bearded iris, and I had Chasing Rainbows, New England IPA. That was the one that really stuck out to me. Um, They say it's a vibrant, fruit-forward IPA with big notes of stone fruit using cashmere and strata. Um, Not going to lie to you, it was good, but there's better out there from bearded iris i've become such like a big fan of bearded irises stuff that i expect more out of them and this felt like uh some of the old school hazies that were coming out in 2017 and 18 and 19 whenever they first started like hitting the market hard it just had a little bit of a hop burn to it which isn't what i really wanted but i will say that label is just ridiculous it's like super iridescent looks like like bubbles of water over top of iridescent multicolor, like rainbow look and just really well done uh, the final beer that really stuck out to me recently was upland brewing company's raz cherry beret i think i've talked about it once before but i it's where i had it again and it's worth talking about again um Upland makes great sours, but this one was unique to me because it literally finishes like a lager, 
but a, like a tart lager. So it's got a super beer finish on the back end, but it's all fruit on the front with huge raspberry notes, some cherry undertones, nice tart, but then literally it feels like you're drinking like a lager or a good ale on the back end. So it still has that beer note that I'm always looking for. So it's a nice throw it on, set out, makes a good lawnmower beer for lack of better terms. Like it just has that lawnmower quality to it. Uh, big fan. I was just about to ask if this was in one of their big fancy sour bottles. And then you said it was a lawnmower beer. And I was nope. like, nope. That's straight not. up. I bet it's in 12 ounce cans if they can it. Um, okay. I had it on draft at the climbing gym. They bring in a bunch of sours and hazies is really their game. All right. I am imbibing on, which I find funny because I said I didn't want a big, I didn't want to drink 16 ounces of beer. So instead I went with 12 ounces I was going to say that's Blood Axe, right? Of Eric Blood Axe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want 16 ounces of beer, so give me 12 ounces, but at 11%. Uh, so this is the Braggot Imperial IPA from Scarlet Lane. And uh, we will definitely be talking about this uh, here in the probably next month or so as one of our reviews. You know, so I, I don't want to give too much away. The can. The can looks like kind of all their cans now, very uh, 80s horror-themed kind of can. Um, I know not all of their stuff looks like that. They got some playful things going on, but I feel like all their house beers kind of have a have like an 80s vibe to them. I don't really know what to, what to really make of it, but it's it's all right. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Spoiler alert, I, I like the original yeah, label I way miss- better. I miss the dude on the label. That yeah, was the Viking. Like the, yeah. yeah, the like that to me just screamed Eric Bloodaxe. Yeah, uh, it just felt right. And now it just looks like their run of the mill can, which is, I mean, semi disappointing for me. But it's probably just cheaper in the long run to just have. They probably just went in house with the design work. That looks like something good old Josh would have done. <laughs> uh, I I will say this: the Eric Bloodaxe is textured. And I love huh? it. I love when cans are like that. So I, it's a nice little touch to it. Um, but I mean, to be fair, super slick can. It does kind of help, like if they if they were to go back into a distribution model of some kind, like this and Lenore. I remember seeing Lenore. They look the same, uh, can wise. So if if you at least got a got something like that going on for your house beers in a way then I, it, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I also didn't have to pay like $20 for a bottle of it. I think yeah, a four I mean, pack was 15 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. What matters Worth is the it. liquid anyway, right? Like what matters is what's inside the can for the most part. I mean, especially if you know that you've had it before and you know, you like the style or it's a brewery that you trust. That's not to say that it doesn't matter what your can looks like on the shelf in the middle of Total Wine with sixty five thousand other cans. Yeah, the 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 OG bottle would definitely stand out more than this twelve ounce can. That is for sure, especially for something like this. But uh, a braggot is basically just a, a mead uh, that has been made. I think it's like fifty one percent malt or something like that. So, uh, and then this one has a base beer of. Uh, a double IPA, an Imperial IPA, which is pretty interesting. It makes me want to drink it out of my really cool horn cup. Yeah, actually, that would be pretty fun. <laughs> I have a this cool like cup from a, uh, a Viking Fest, and it's like a FDA approved lacquer that you can drink out of. So I always drink mead out of it at festivals and it hooks to my belt so that I can carry it. Yeah, big fan. That actually does sound pretty good. Not going to lie. Uh, what I have drank lately, um, I also had an Upland Brewing beer. I had their Ooh. Two of Tarts, which was a passion fruit and mango sour fruited Gosa. I love me some Gosa beers. Uh, thanks to Westbrook getting me hooked on that a few years ago down in South Carolina. So this is, it's super just refreshing. And I had, I bought a six pack when I went camping and I drank like five of them and like didn't realize it because they're, it's four and a half percent. You don't really taste 
any beer or anything like that. Like it just goes down pretty smooth. It's a Gosa. It's got the saltiness to it. Um, everything's very kind of subtle. Nothing really overtakes the the fruit and stuff's not overpowering at all. So it's super refreshing. Like I was out fishing, drinking most of it, and just didn't didn't cause didn't cause any issues. Like I couldn't go fish and drink Eric Blood Axe. Like that would be a bad time. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you could. <laughs> you can. I mean, technically, you could just go have a have a bottle share and fish if you wanted to. Uh, you're probably going to lose your fishing pole at some point, but... Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> but I really like it. it. I got it as a six-pack, which I thought was... Gr- what I thought was great was I was in Liberty, Indiana, which is BFE nowhere, um, and went into a liquor store down there expecting only to see... You know, Bud, Bush, the the usual. And they had like an entire craft section. They had they had zombie dust. And I was like, it's one of those where it's like, now nah, you know. It's literally <laughs> everywhere. Like, I could find it in Liberty, Indiana, across the street from a store that still sells a ton of Trump mem- memorabilia. Dude, it's everywhere. <laughs> I've seen it. It really in, is. Like, I've seen it in gas stations. Uh, I've seen it in, like the smallest and most hood Kroger that we stopped at on the way down south. I was like, oh, I just need, you know, uh, some snacks for the rest of this trip. And I walked in and was like, what the hell? This is in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It's southern Indiana. And now we're getting three Floyds to throw of zombie dust there. Like, what happened? Oh, yeah. wait, you actually could have brewed this much the whole time? <laughs> yeah, it is wild to see just how far reaching it has become it'll be and, and it's kind of curious because it's like will there be a retraction at any point like will they be over distributed we've seen that happen before so yeah i feel like they're too big for that to happen but we have seen it i mean we've had a lot of breweries pull out of distro recently mm-hmm. and i the more i talk to breweries on the phone all day at work the more it sounds like that's probably going to be the case like they make just so much more money in house, it's just the numbers are mind blowing. I mean, that's just not too surprising. Plus, I mean, you're also getting somebody in who's going to a brewery just to buy beer and not like to take home and not to like grab a beer or something while you're there. So, I mean, it makes sense. I don't, I don't disagree with it, and I think there'll still be some. But I could see a lot of places going, especially like the full on, like outside of the state distribution or. Something yeah. like that. Uh, then I I went down. I had a, a buddy come into town, and I took him on a little tour of of some breweries. First, we went to Hot Boys. Shout out Hot Boys. <laughs> Matt's uh, trying to get a sponsor here from Hot dude, Boys. You need to I, tag him in the damn I, show. I, I will tag him. Uh, if you don't know, Hot Boys is a is a like Nashville hot chicken place down in Fountain Square where the old Pepe's Grill used to be next to Siam Square. Uh, It is the best chicken sandwich I've ever had in my entire life. It continues to be that a year. I've basically been doing going there for a year now. Just fantastic. Uh, The only other place that you can get Hot Boys Chicken is in California. So we just got lucky and got one here. So what are the chances of that, especially in Fountain Square? Yep. Yeah. And so it's, it's something where I tell everyone to go. I've yet to, I've yet to have anyone hate it, not like it. Um, they do sell beer, they do sell alcohol, so it's it's great. The only time it ever sucks is in, is on a hot day, like in the like evening, like six seven o'clock. If you try and go during the summer, and it's like eighty five degrees outside, it's probably going to be hard to get a seat inside because there's not much space, and sitting outside is miserable. Because well, yeah, eating like, hot chicken outside sounds terrible. Yeah, and there's like really no shade and stuff like that. It's one of those where it's a perfect spot for them, but it's not big enough at the same time. But there's also nowhere to really grow in that space, so it's kind of a unique. Uh, well, they should just buy the old situation. brew dog place. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so we went there, and then we uh. Walked down the street to Chili Water, so I introduced him to Chili Water. Uh, I had the Black Friday Belgian Black. To be honest, I don't really remember much about this beer. Uh, I did not write any notes down, 
And when I went looking for notes, I couldn't find any. There's like nothing on Untapped. I couldn't really find what a Belgian black was. It seems like that's not an actual style. And it's more of just like a Belgian dark. <laughs> so they yeah, just called it say, a Belgian black. I feel black. like that's a Belgian dark probably. Yeah, but, but that's what they call it. That's that's what's listed on their menu. Uh, it's 6.6% mean... ABV. It's a Belgian it was a Belgian dark, and I really like Belgians, and I I like the dark Belgians because that's like getting into. I I believe I could be wrong, but I feel like they're they're not too dissimilar from um like what, traveling into like Belgian quads and Belgian triples and stuff like that, which I'm a big fan of. So yeah, went to Chili Wilds. Went that was the night I bought the hat. Finally got myself a beer a brewery hat, and uh, I really like really like that hat. And it was only twenty five bucks, which I thought was a pretty good price. Hats, I feel hats, like that's that's pretty good for a brewery. You're gonna yeah. get normally twenty to sixty, depending on where you are, right? Yeah, like, I was expecting like thirty, thirty five, but it was something where I was like, I really, I liked the hat a little bit too much that I was willing to spend a little bit more. But it, it came in at twenty five, and then uh, what was nice is they do make your own four packs at Chili Water, so that was that was quite nice because I. I brought home four beers that I haven't, a few that I haven't tried before of theirs, and then a few that I just haven't tried in a while. I had the German Pilsner um, out of a can. It was all right. It reminded me way too much of like Bud Light. Like it had that kind of flavor to it and a little off-putting. I do have a, uh, I do have like a jalapeno or it's a habanero beer from them. Oh, look at you branching out into the real man's beer. (laughs) I thought about bringing that one on to to one of these episodes just so we could taste it and see what what's happening there. Uh the last one I had we we then went over to Googman. Uh I had to take him there. It's like if you're coming into Indy, it's like Sun King. It, it probably would have been Sun King and Googman if we would have had time. Um but Chili Water was down the street and you got to walk off that chicken once uh and we went to uh Hotel Tango. I forgot to mention that, which is across the street from Chili Water. But uh, we ended up at Googman as the last stop, and I just uh, I gravitated right towards that dirty chai Baltic porter that they made with Cosmetic that we had uh, right after they had made it. Like we ended up going to Cosmetic to have it, and it's just so good. Like Baltic yeah. porters are are such a an interesting porter style. Like I looked it up, and it's a, a smooth, cold fermented and cold lagered beer brewed with lager yeast. That's why it was chosen, most likely, because Ryan pushed and pushed and pushed because they wanted to do something out of the or like massively out of the ordinary. And by they, I mean uh, Googman, because Ryan is a sessionable brewer. Like that's his whole that's his whole goal as a brewery is to be yeah. more sessionable. And Googman House is like, um, no, big, bad, bold, <laughs> big is all get out. Well, this is the perfect collab. I honestly think this is probably the perfect balance between two brewers that you get Ryan's crispiness that out of the brew. So it's that unique like lager, nice and smooth, perfectly brewed. And then it just has those big hits of all the flavor that you get in that beer. Yeah. Big, 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 big fan. So shout out to them. I'm sure that Matt's going to talk a little highly of it too, but Dude, just shout out for that beer. So I mean, good. there's there's literally nothing bad to say about it. It's an it's eight point one percent, which is way above what Ryan makes. When it drinks uh, way less than that too, it doesn't feel like that. Yep, uh, four point one three on Untapped. So it's it's brewed with chai tea spice blend, medium roasted coffee beans, and then lagered for eight weeks. And I mean, you just you taste everything, and that chai really pops. Yep. And I don't I don't I don't drink chai tea, but I like chai flavor and beer. Uh, what's the one from? Shoot, there was that uh, that chai one. Sh- yeah, Chai Guy. I loved Chai Guy. What was that Milk Stout? Chai Guy Milk Stout. Yeah. R.I.P. Black Acre. Um, that one was fantastic. I remember I was able to find some of that right after they called it quits. Still at admire. I need Manahan to make a Chai version of his uh, Mercules. Mercules. I think that, that would, would be, be pretty interesting. Super good. Like a smoked leather boot chai. Shout out, Manahan. <laughs> well, let's hop on into the news. The first story we got here, 
This actually kind of started a little bit different when I was writing notes and then I changed it. So originally what I had seen was that Funky Buddha, which is a Florida brewery and a big time Florida brewery, uh, they, I, I always kind of thought of them as like the Sun King of Florida at one yep. point, and that could be wrong, but that was always kind of what I took it as. Never really had a bad beer from them. That Hop Gun IPA over there is just pretty good. And what is it, Last Snow? Yeah, Last Imperial. Snow was so good back in the yeah. day. I've had some bottles recently that just did not feel like the original Last Snow. But, man, that first few batches that I ever had, whew, holy cow. <laughs> so, Funky Buddha has rebought their brewery essentially from Constellation Brands. And so what has happened actually is that Constellation Brands is getting out of the craft beer game altogether. Uh, so they sold Funky Buddha back to to the original owners and then a brewery called Four Corners Brewing out of Texas was also yep. sold back. And AB InBev uh, sold... Oh, did I write it in the notes? No, AB InBev also sold back the right everything to one of the companies that they had owned uh now not a big one that that rang any bells um so that's like three so there's clearly something going on here that is causing these people to get out of the craft beer game uh all the the big the big time guys kind of selling stuff but what really caught my eye with the story i found was that 2016, Constellation bought Ballast Point Brewing for $1 billion. They sold it in 2019 to Kings and Convicts Brewing for $40 million. Yep. You ate $960 million in three years? How? Well, they, How? Because they pulled back all the distro. As soon as the fucking thing got bought, you never saw it anymore. I you never, still don't. You still don't ever. see it. It is well, yeah, just but, like I used to be able to get Sculpin in any liquor store. Yeah. Anywhere. And then AB and Bev came in and bought it. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe we'll get some of their more unique things distroed. No, no. No, no. They just took it all away. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened, but that's the biggest disappointment in craft beer that I've had in a long time because they made some crazy good beers, some fun beers. They were kind of on the like forefront of experimentals and then just disappeared. I can't tell you the last time I've heard the name ballast point other than us talking about it being bought back or just talking at work about, you know, Hey, things that we used to drink in the past. But what have you heard about it? It's just mind blowing. Like wicked weeds still is big and they got bought out. But I don't understand what happened to Boss Boy. It, yeah, I I don't I don't get it at all, and I I don't understand how you lose that much value. Like that is a that is a significant amount to get to a point where you feel the need that you need to sell the brand and you sell it to an, just another random brewing company. Like I've never heard of Kings and Convicts. Neither have I at all. And it's just like, well, where the hell did you get forty million dollars to <laughs> to buy that? And that was the best offer you got. There wasn't anybody. Heck, I feel like the brewer themselves could have offered forty million. It. That's I my point. thought too. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, well, why not just just do something like that? Um, it's interesting. Um, so moving away from Ballast Point, I did read that. Yeah, like Constellation is literally like stripping itself of all of its craft beers. Yeah, I think they only had like two or three, and I think they're now just completely out of the out of it. Um, um sticking with four their corners. Because four corners, I it just came up. Like I haven't even sent the welcome email yet, but they just came up on my screen that I'm going to be talking to them. So it just seems like ironic timing but I, it makes sense like now they're like well i guess we're gonna need a like an erp system <laughs> yeah yeah you're not wrong so they so, just came through my my dashboard but maybe we'll start to see funky buddha again i wouldn't be bad or if you see it for the first time i wouldn't be mad about that say, it'd be it'd be nice i i tell everybody when they go to florida you know try i 
my mother-in-law goes to Florida a lot and she, she will drink, um, craft beer every now and then. And I always send stuff her way. Um, and I'm, she went down last time and she sent me, she sent me one that I had had. I can't remember what it was called. And I was like, if you see funky Buddha, just drink funky Buddha. Like, man, you won't, you won't go wrong. There are a little bit of derailment here, but Florida is putting out question maybe arguably the best dark beers in the country from a bunch of breweries right now and then some of their like hate their game for like that fruited sour game is even bigger than some of the other locations that are huge because they've got tripping animals we just now open dream state which is the old brewer from tripping animals so it's same dude brewing a different place but Three Sons is putting out huge stouts. They do collabs with uh, like uh, oh, the Wisconsin brewery that's Untitled Art. They have a like a w- collab with them that's huge, crazy. So don't sleep on Florida's beer game. Um, if you get a chance to get down there, Invasive Species is amazing. Three Sons is amazing. They just so many good breweries in Florida. Like it's it's insane. All right, on to the next news story. I found this one kind of interesting because I'm always curious how these surveys are done. But Drizzly, which is the uh, service that will bring you beer, so like DoorDash for beer and wine and liquor and everything else. Is that still just tied to Big Red? Oh, I didn't know it was ever just tied to Big Red, to be honest. Back originally, I believe it was just Big Red that delivered through Drizzly. I don't know if it still is now or not, but oh, I don't know. Whenever, <laughs> I had to, I had to make the graphic for Indiana on tap a way back when. Mm. So they conducted a survey, and their findings show that less people are going out to drink due to inflation, which I think is somewhat true, but also not as true. I feel like the the whole inflation thing is being overplayed media wise and story wise, like everything is just inflation. Like we're going to sit here and talk about it. And I will tell you that I don't go out much and it has nothing to do with inflation whatsoever. I just don't like people (laughs) that a hundred thousand percent. Uh, so this is the, the fifth annual nationwide survey uncovers that inflation is prompting a return to entertaining at home with fewer people going out to an on-premise location. One in four respondents said that they will opt to drink at home more often in 2023 than at bars and restaurants. Mm. Uh, not contact me. <laughs> and then they talk about self-bartending at home, so essentially people just learning how to make cocktails at home and stuff like that. The rise in zero proof, which I don't know how much of that is really... No, that's interesting to me. So Fisher's... I don't know if it's open yet, but Fishers Indiana is getting like our first zero proof bar. Whole bar. Can we take some bets on how long that thing lasts? Cause is that not just a juice place? Like, is that not like what that is? Right. Like, but I is mean, this like, is this like true zero proof or are we still talking, uh, O'Doul's where there's still alcohol in the beer well, and they I mean, call it non-alcoholic, <laughs> despite the fact that you still have to be 21 to buy it. Yeah, I, I assume it's like uh, Untitled Arts stuff that's a zero or um, NA. I don't know if it's zero proof, but yeah, they're literally like cocktails and mock. I guess mocktails, so to say. Yeah, I am kind of curious. Like, that's just juice, I've, damn it! Right? <laughs> I've not tried any any zero proof. Um. Maybe we should try that. Maybe we should try and find something, uh, even if it's just liquor, because I'm kind of curious what it like. What is vod? What does zero proof vodka taste like? I've had um, Southern Grist makes a zero proof or an NA sour that is stupid good. Like it's basically just fruit juice at that point. But yeah. but to be fair, I ruined the entire idea because I bought it and then I poured rum in it. Oh. But the, the big one I want to try is uh, the big one I want to try is Athletic Company. Yeah, that, um, the one that makes all the different ones. Yeah, um, I've not had any of theirs. I've seen it on shelves, but for a long time you couldn't find it on shelves because yeah. everybody was buying it. Um, 
but it is it's a huge deal there's a lot of breweries that are jumping on board like sun king did a zero proof recently um i think i know they were trying uh and a bunch of other places are trying to hit that mark how long it lasts uh i don't know uh I will say for me at this, at the age of 35, I do not like going out a lot of times because A, they're, the service is horrendous. Yes. And, you know, we're still going through this thing where, you know, restaurants and, and breweries and stuff like that may suck at paying or, or whatever it is. So they're not, they don't have people and, you know, the service industry is still in their, in their funk. And so it can make it hard. Like, uh, if you have to just sit around and wait for someone to come take your order and then it takes a while. We've had that at Sun King Fishers, which yep. I don't feel like should happen when people literally walk by you 12 times and they will not take your order. Like, I had it at Sun King Carmel. Like, yeah, mind blowing. It, I was at. Uh, the other day I took my son to uh, Ale Emporium Fishers and I sat down with him. We were just going to get one of the big ass pretzels and I was going to get a beer and get him a root beer because he was excited to drink beer, quote unquote, like daddy. And so we sat down, the dude came to the table and did not look at me one time when talking. He was like, well, can I get you? And I was like, "Uh, okay. So we ordered and then he came and he like slammed the beer on the table and kind of slid it at me and then walked away again. And then was like, can I get you guys some real, some real food after we ordered the pretzel? And I was like, nah, we're just here for a snack, man. And he's like, okay. And he walked away and like just tossed the check at me whenever we left. Dude, when I go, my, my goal is to tip a lot. Like, because I know what it's like to be a server and I've mm-hmm. been in that world. But if you're going to be a dick, I'm not going to tip you well. You're going to lose that tip. Look, dude, while I know it's weird... If somebody comes in with just a kid to Ale Emporium and you're not expecting them to tip much, my bill was 18 bucks. I would have likely tipped $10 or more to a good server because I know that I'm taking up a table that could have five or six people at it. But no, now you're going to get a dollar because you were rude, didn't care. And I guarantee I wouldn't have got that service from a girl. It sounds weird to say, but I guarantee I would not have got that. Yeah. Because they most of, most likely they would have wanted to like smile and like wave at Roman and all that, but it just blows my mind. You're there to make money. Your whole goal is to be customer facing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it just it's not that hard. But like you continue to run into that, and then you continue to just not really want to go out. And that's not everywhere. And we've had good times. We've had bad times. Some you know, there's like when we did our little uh, our jaunt across town. And you you go to we went to um oh what was the beer brewery and they had some kind of yeah. bad beer and it's like we did flights and so you can kind of get over it and we were go- we knew we were going other places it's not the end of the world but like what if that's your night out and what if you chose all three of those beers to drink like that's a bad time. Yeah, for sure. There's stuff like that. There's there's the the carbonation problem. There's the buying beers at locations that you get home and then the beer that you bought is no good cuz there's literally no carbonation in the damn can. You know, if you want to talk inflation, we can talk price gouging for gas cuz yeah. I guarantee there's no real inflation going on there. We're just price gouging everyone. So, yeah, like I don't want to drive all over town just to go drink a beer or two when I got to pay $4 a gallon or, you know, be realistic, three seventy because it seems like every time I, I finally decide to go anywhere, it's three seventy at this point. Like, I don't want to do that. And like, okay, I can go to Scart Lane up the street, but lately they don't have a lot of beers on tap, and a lot of the ones on tap I just don't personally like. I can go to Triton. That's fine. But like, anywhere outside of that, like, it's a, I got to drive and you don't know what you're going to get. It's just so hit or miss. Whereas, you know, everybody wants to kind of poo poo drinking at home. Well, a, I went out, I can, I can go to the store, buy exactly what I want and buy multiple things of what I want, come back home, be comfortable, not have to deal with anybody outside of my family. 
and be perfectly content with with doing it. I can sit out back. You know, if you got if you're a fire person, you can go build a fire and sit out back. You don't have to fight over tables. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to deal with rude people. Like I think 2020 just kind of lit a fire under everybody's ass (laughs) of there's way too many assholes out in this world and it's not worth putting up with them. Like, and I, and I think too, that there is also a, uh, 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 introvert versus extrovert thing and the extroverts are still going out. But I think for the introverts, 2020 really pushed us inside and like told you it's okay. Like, the world isn't going to collapse if you don't go out and necessarily stimulate the economy from outside your house. You can do it inside Amazon yeah. and all the delivery services. And I can go to Meyer just down the road and I can literally get like, they have so many beers that I am perfectly content with. Like it's, it's, it's a lot of just playing the hits. Like I'm not finding anything crazy, but I'm okay with that. Like M 43 pseudo Sue, Anything from uh, Taxman, all the all the stuff from um, Three Floyds, Sun King, like they just have everything, everything you could need, and perfectly fine with that. Plus, their ginormous liquor selection. Yeah. So here, a few things. First, twenty six percent of respondents said they plan to spend more on drinks for at home than on premise this year. That's interesting. Like, I feel like it's easy to spend more for drinks at home than it is for on premise. Now, not if you're going out to a bar all the time. Like, if your goal is I'm gonna go out and get let's get crunk, then you're definitely gonna go out and spend a hundred bucks easy because you're gonna do shots and all that nonsense. But when I go out, it's most likely fifty bucks total for wherever we go, to like grand total. And whenever I go shopping for home, I feel like I definitely spend more because <laughs> I'm more yeah. like. <laughs> well, and you also have to remember, too, that uh, this is more than just beer. And so like, oh, yeah. when and you think about it, like too. from well, and when you think about it from a spirit, like just from a spirit category, you go out, you know, a good cocktail is running 16 your, bucks. Yeah. Easy. When we went to Hotel Tango. A two ounce pour of their reserve was of their reserve bourbon or whiskey. I can't remember. Why, I think it was bourbon was thirteen dollars. A two ounce pour. Yep. That bottle was like seventy bucks. So it's like you go out and you try it, but if you like it, I doubt you're going to go and just continue paying thirteen dollars over and over and over again. You know, and, and then like depending on how much you're drinking. And how often you're drinking, like, I don't drink a lot when it comes to to whiskeys and stuff, but I got a bunch of them. And so they just kind of last. Sit there. Like, and, yeah, they last. They, they last a long time. So, you know, they're just, you just drink them as, as you go. And I'm not somebody who goes out and necessarily buys, like, five different ones. Like, most of what I got in there has been in there for a year, and they've just been random events. I'm like, oh, I want Screwball. And I got a a gallon of uh, Johnny Walker Black for my birthday in 2022 <laughs> because my parents are insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing yeah. that. It was uh, like, oh, you're back to drinking. Here's a <laughs> here's an entire gallon of Johnny Walker. Here's Black. Here's how to die. Thanks. Uh-huh. Yeah, thanks. So I, the last thing for this news story that really stood out, I think it's the most interesting to me, is that the survey found a likely resurgence in home entertaining in 2023. Did that like go away before? Like, I don't think that went away. I entertain at home just as much now as I did in 2014. I have a fucking way bigger house and way more places to entertain people, but I feel like I entertain just as much. I'm also, I'm, uh, I, I mean, I don't know that I would qualify as an introvert, but I, f- I feel like I would prefer to be around a small group of people than go to these places where I have to shout over stuff and interact with people that I don't know, nor do I care about. Yeah, my guess is this is more hyperbolic than anything else. Mainly because, you know, we're, we're, we can say we're three years post-pandemic, 
but really I feel like it's more like two, you know, 2021. If not one. Like, yeah, 2021 still kind of felt a little weird, um, even as things kind of reopened and stuff like that, and everyone tried to go back to, you know, whatever the new normal became. But, uh, but I mean, obviously people are going to be more interested. Also, when did you do this? How many people did did you ask? What's the demographics? I didn't, I didn't see any of that. Like, you know, it's just kind of this, and it's just like twenty one percent of respondents stated they plan to host friends. Okay, well then, what was the results last yeah, year? Yeah, like ten. <laughs> yeah, like if we're if we're on a if we're on a resurgence, then where are we at? Like twenty one percent doesn't sound very high. Yeah, like when I you just, think about it, like that's you know out of a hundred people, that's twenty one people told you that they plan to host people, while seventy nine people said no, I don't want to host anyone. So what was unless it I'm just reading 14? this wrong? Yeah, like fourteen out of a hundred, and I don't know. I've always been one to prefer hosting people at our house than go out places. For uh, for a few reasons, because one, I can bring in whatever I want to drink. I can go to Total Wines, Cons, to Stonies, whatever it may be, get all kinds of crazy beers, crazy interesting things, get these ridiculous meads that I'm going to pay $20 a glass for out in the public. But if I do it in my house, it's $40 for the bottle. Like, why would I, why would I prefer going out? Like, why would I ever choose that? It's just, it's interesting. Now, I don't like cleaning, so that's part of why sometimes I'd rather go out. But I would rather be able to drink whatever I want right here in my house. So then, when it's all said and done, I have to walk 14 stairs up to the main floor and yep. pass out in the bat, in the bed instead of hopefully get home or take an Uber and then have to get my car the next day or whatever that may be. Like, sure, it's fun and all, but... I feel like, like you said, 2020 caused a lot of rifts and it taught us a lot about what really matters. Mm -hmm. You were not wrong. For the final topic here, it's called Around Indiana. We got four upcoming events that we have found. If, uh, if you got an event coming up in the near future at all, let us know. We can... One, add it to the Barrel Chat calendar, which you can find on our our link in Instagram, the link in our bio. But we have History on Tap at Connor Prairie, which is technically happening tonight as you're listening to this, June 2nd. So that is going on at Connor Prairie. I really wish I could go to that one. That one sounded kind of cool. but Oh, that's it, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow. I think it's tonight. sold out, though. Oh, really? I'm not 100% sure, but I think I looked and it was sold out. Yeah. Although Six, $60 what, just sounded like a lot. I wonder if there was a member price. We're Connor Perry members. so mm. Yeah, so that's happening, as I said, technically tonight because you're listening to this on June 2nd. Uh, then we saw that the Gugman Haas has their fourth anniversary party, which is happening on June 17th. We'll both be gone, so. I know. like. I've seen a few different things that I really want to go to and it's literally while I'm on vacation and it's just like, mm, of course. Yeah. Of course. This one sounds like it'd be fun. It's going to be big. It's going to be well attended because they're just popular right now. Mm hmm. Which can't blame them. They make good stuff. And uh, if you haven't listened to Wednesday's, this last Wednesday's episode, we did their milk jug or uh winner's milk jug, their milk stout as our beer review, so definitely check that out. Then on July 7th, Ash and Elm is having their 7th anniversary party, and it's a rooftop party, which I thought was kind of cool. So I imagine it's going to be on the roof of their new building. Seven bucks, limited quantities, obviously, because uh, the roof can only hold so many people. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of neat to see what yeah. they got going on. Their place is interesting now. Um, it's way bigger. I like it. Yeah. Way I bigger. I like it. It reminds me of, I don't know if you've been, but in Columbus, there's uh, Hoof Hearted. And I've not. They, so Hoof Hearted is on the outside of a, an apartment complex. And you can like 
buy tickets to swim in the apartment complex's pool while you're drinking hoof's hearted beer. Sounds I'm like, like well, a risky move for the apartment complex. It, I mean, money's money, yo. <laughs> I'm not True. twenty dollars is twenty dollars. <laughs> And then the last one I saw, I actually stumbled across this on Facebook last night, and uh, Pax Verum is doing a third annual Way Out Beer Fest. I don't remember seeing this before. Is so, that at their location? I don't know. It's in Lapel, so okay, cool. So I mean, there's. I, <laughs> I'm going to guess no because it says that there's 30 breweries, wineries, and, and distilleries. It's way too small there. Yeah. It's well, it says downtown or. Yeah, downtown me. It's they probably just block off the square. Yeah. So uh let's see here. Take place on the picturesque downtown main street of Lapel in front of their tap room. So yes. Okay. They're just Wait. going to be at the tap room and just block it all off. That's kind of cool. Uh the event will focus on quality and will showcase many unique, unusual, and rare way out beers for the, the participating breweries. Expect to see and enjoy many new beers and or riffs on existing beers. Attendees will also have the opportunity to vote on their favorite Way Out People's Choice beer and brewery at the event. Which is what I thought was kind of interesting because there's some stuff. Like, you know, Greg, the assistant brewer at Hoosier, who's one of our buddies, sent us some beers that he was drinking today as uh, research and good lord those all looked kind of gross. <laughs> but, like, there's a blue milk one from RAR, which is just a play on the blue milk from Star Wars Disneyland. Well, look. Um, he did have a Mortalis. They are literally comparing fruit juices to other fruit juices, like, at this point. Like, their, their, whole, their whole goal is studying fruited sours, yeah, heavily got fruited to, sours. Yeah, yeah. That's he's research. gonna die. Of, he's going to die of diabetes. Well, yeah, in like I mean, a month. <laughs> like Jesus, that is true. That is true. Be a, like if you're drinking your own to sample them, and then you're bringing in other people to sample them. Like they got a four pack sampler from 450 when they went down there not too long ago. I'm just like, how many diabetes bombs can you drink before you're like, maybe, just maybe, I should stop. <laughs> that would be interesting. Like, I got diabetes <laughs> from drinking fruited beers. Like, dude, it's there's so much sugar in them, right? Oh like, yeah, I'm sure there is. It's probably worse for you than like a Big Mac. <laughs> that is gonna do it for this Friday four pack. Be on the lookout next week for Daybreak, the coffee vanilla cream ale from Wolf Ridge Brewing, which is out of Columbus, Ohio. Again, if you haven't listened to our previous episode, that was Googman House's uh, Winner's Milk Jug Milk Stout. That was, spoiler alert, a pretty damn good beer. And That's I will good. say, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start pumping this one up two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, we have Highland Brewery's Gale yeah. Gale. You don't want to miss that episode. You Out really don't. field, baby. Holy crap. Holy crap. So just giving a nice little tease there to be on that lookout for that here in two weeks. So until next time, cheers. Cheers, y'all.